their behaviors are the fundamental layer. You have to do the right things for anything, for sleep, for learning, for uh, sports performance. But then there's nutrition, supplementation, prescription drugs, and then off-label stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so we always think about when you hear hormones in sports, you always think just the raw conversation about anabolics, all the banned stuff. We could yeah. talk about that stuff and how it works. Years ago, I used to work on androgens, testosterone and its derivatives and how it impacts brain development and body function, fear and, and also mental states. But there's a category of supplements that are very interesting that for most people who aren't exploring testosterone augmentation for sport, work very well to increase testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Not, you know, 300, you know, not a tripling or anything like that. Because the, what happens is the testosterone molecule, it, it's basically carried in a cargo. So it can be in its free form, unbound form, free testosterone. And everyone says, oh, I want more free testosterone. You want more, but the, these, what are called sex hormone binding globulins. So there's something called sex hormone binding globulin and albumin they carry the testosterone molecule to the different tissues of the body. So you don't want all your testosterone free. You want some of it bound up so that it can be delivered to the different tissues, including your brain. But if you have too much sex hormone bonding globulin, the testosterone can't really do its things, okay? So Tonga Ali, about 400 milligrams per day, has the effect of raising free testosterone and overall testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. I mean, I actually think that a lot of people who think they need TRT, when I hear about guys in their 20s and 30s, it, it, I mean, look, I'm in my mid 40s and I, I can tell you that you can get and maintain very healthy testosterone levels without TRT if you do the right things, the behaviors, the nutrition, all the other stuff early on. There's sometimes people are have hypogonadal syndromes and things like that. But when you look at TRT, I mean, the way that the clinics and the doctors typically do it is to give 200 milligrams and then send people out for two weeks and then they come back because they can charge them to come back repeatedly. It's clear that on a, without any TRT, the testes normally make anywhere from seven to 15 milligrams of testosterone per day. So taking this massive dose and then waiting two weeks is absolutely foolish. It doesn't, it's amazing to me that the, the medical profession does this because it doesn't match anything about the normal patterns of endocrinology. It's just not how the body works. Testosterone has the, the effects we're all aware of, like deepening the voice, facial hair, muscle growth, recovery, et cetera, mostly because testosterone increases protein synthesis. You look at a, a young male in puberty, it's a protein synthesis machine. Yeah. They eat, they eat, they eat, and they just grow and grow and grow, and they're putting on muscles and they're lean and, you know. So most often they're lean. But in any case, testosterone has some very interesting effects on the brain. The, the major mental effect of testosterone is it makes effort feel good. And the reason it does it is that the amygdala, this fear center in the brain, this anxiety center in the brain has androgen receptors. It has testosterone receptors. And so it, it, the way this works in animals and in humans as well is that for most species, the males of that species never get a chance to mate, right? So if you think about, uh, I'll probably pick an example where you'll, you'll know the exception because I know you know a lot about natural animals and animals that are hunted. But if you think about animals with antlers, like rams, there's been a lot of research, believe it or not, on rams. It'd be fun, mm. to, I'd love to work on it. And they have to fight for the right to mate. Yes. And the fighting is a choice, right? And the decision to walk away is a choice usually. They usually don't kill each other, although I know some of the injuries can lead to death. So testosterone, these surges in testosterone that happen seasonally in certain species like rams or even these little hamsters, the males will rip each other's testicles off in order to fight for the right to mate. So males of a given species have to actually overcome the fear of pain and punishment. And the surge in testosterone is what causes the shift to the willingness to engage in battle. Mm. And so when humans are taking low doses or, or reasonable doses of testosterone, or they're increasing their testosterone, or they're going through puberty, effort and leaning into pain and challenge actually has the effect of making the body feel soothed and good. It's a drive, just like sex is a drive or drinking water when you're thirsty is a drive. This stuff is all anchored deep within the hypothalamus. This isn't a cognitive thing. And why when people are testosterone depleted, they feel depressed. And when people have a surge of testosterone, they feel relief and anxiety, provided it's in the appropriate range.